Hello and welcome to this tutorial for Blackboard Learn. Today we're going to learn about the Build Content button found in all of the content areas within your Blackboard course. So to get to the Build Content button, you'll need to click on a content area within your course. And you'll notice three buttons, Build Content, Assessments, and Tools. For now we'll keep the focus on the Build Content button. Highlighting the Build Content button will show you all the different multimedia items that can be attached to your course. First area is an item or a file. The real big difference between the two is that an item gives you a text editor box to explain your item, and you really don't have to attach anything to an item if you don't want to, whereas a file is just a straight file attached into Blackboard. You can add in audio files, images, videos, and web links. One of the nice features of Blackboard is the ability to create a learning module. And we'll go through a learning module in a later tutorial, but I wanted to show you it is found under the Build Content button. There is also ways to create a lesson plan within Blackboard, a syllabus, and to link to other items within your course. You also have the ability to create folders within your content area to group some of your information, or to create just a blank page in Blackboard where you can put a lot of information. The Mashups tool features the ability to use some of the tools that are already out on the web and integrate it into your Blackboard course. So if you have Flickr slideshows, or you use the SlideShare presentation, or decide to put a YouTube video into your course, it could all be done through the Mashups tool. So let's start with Item. I'll click on Item and be taken to the Create Item screen. So I'm going to name this Item 1. And then I can go down into this text editor, enter in the information you might want for this item. So I'm going to just put some information in there. So in the next category, you can attach an item to your course. And in the final category, options, you can permit users to view the content or not. So by default, it's always going to be able to be viewed, but this is the granular control of being able to turn an item on or off at a specific time. You also can elect to track your views on a specific item and also select date and time restrictions as we've talked about in prior tutorials. So right now I'm going to leave everything else default and click submit. So this gives you a good idea as to what an item might look like that you don't have an attachment associated with it. So let's add a few other items in and see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and add a file. Browse my computer here. And for this one we'll do this example Excel document. So you will have a few different options here. Uh, first off, you can add multiple files uh, using the file function here. And you can also change the name of as to what these files might be. Uh, I'm going to leave everything at the default. You can also elect to open it in a new window, which I'm not going to do. Or you can uh, add an alignment to the content, which is something that we actually don't do in the, our version of Blackboard here. So you won't need to worry about that one. Uh, again, you can have the standard options of being able to permit users to view the content or not, track views, and add the date restrictions. So I'll go ahead and hit submit. And you'll notice the difference between a file and an item. The item gave you the ability to go ahead and put on some information. Uh, and again, we could have attached another document to here, which we did not do. Uh, but we will in just a moment for another item that we can create. And this one is just a file. So how it works is, I really can't do anything to this item other than read the content that's put in the text editor. But this file, I can click on the name, and it's going to bring up a dialog box allowing me to download and look at that file. Let's get back into our content area here. Alright, let's add another item. Let's add a web link. Now these few other items in here, uh, I'm not really going to go through. I'll go through image in just a moment, but you can add audio files and it'll bring up a little audio player so the file can be played directly in Blackboard. And the same thing with video. Um, what we tend to do on campus at CSU Pueblo is to host videos on our own video streaming server or utilize YouTube and then bring in the mashup tool. What it's going to do is going to keep the size of your course down. Uh, video files can get pretty large as well as audio files. So there's different ways that we can embed media from other sources into the course. A web link though is just a link out to some other website so that you can put it directly in the course. I'll go ahead and click on web link, give it a name, we'll just go ahead and link out to Google today. And then we'll add in the URL, http google.com. If you needed to add a description, you could do that. And you can also add an attachment. 
And then, of course, take a look at your different options. I'm going to have this open in a new window. Click Submit. Okay, so now that we've added the Google link into our course, we can take a look at it, make sure it works. Clicking on Google, and that's right, opens a pop-up to Google. And you'll also notice that there is an attached file that you can then click on and save, open, download for a different time. Go ahead and cancel on that right now. So you can really see that there's a difference between the items that you put in your course, and it'll also show you a different icon for each item type that you might drop in there. Now once you drop in a few items into a content area, you might want to start rearranging them. All you need to do is highlight the item, and you can drag and drop it into different placements. Now one thing that's helpful when you're doing a little bit of rearranging is you might have a big long paragraph here, and if you drag this item, you're going to notice it's one big thing to pull around. So if you highlight the item, there's a little arrow on the right hand side that you can uh, hide the content in your specific areas. What that does is it makes all the items the same size, and it easily allows you to rearrange your items in your course. Okay, so now we got these items rearranged, you could always hit the arrows to show all the information that's attached to those items. I am going to go to build content and let's add in an image. So clicking on an image is going to give you some options. Now the first thing I want to do is browse my computer. I've got a file here that we can drop in here, a picture of myself, give it a name. You want to color the link and any alternate text about that particular image. So if someone's using a screen reader and they need to know what that particular image is about, you'll want to definitely add in your alt text. If you had any more description, you can add that in their text box there. Now in the second image options category, you'll have the ability to leave the original dimensions or you can customize the dimensions. You'll have to know how to scale your image uh, to the right ratio so they don't get any uh, stretching or skewing of that image. Uh, I'm going to leave mine on original. I've already pre-sized my image, but just to let you know if you needed to do something on the fly, you can easily in write in a pixel value for the size of an image you'd want to drop in. I'm going to leave everything else pretty much default at this point, and I will go ahead and submit. So here we go, an image added into your course pretty easily through Blackboard. So as you can see, you can add a lot of different multimedia aspects to your course. So one area I did want to kind of close up this tutorial on is using the build content button to drop in a YouTube video. YouTube videos are really helpful. There's a lot of good information out there. You may produce your own YouTube videos that you'd want to drop into your course. So let's go and take a look how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and search one of the videos we have here at the ITC. Once you do your search, now just to give you an idea of what I did, this is searching YouTube. So if you know the specific video title that you're looking for, you just type it into your search and it's going to bring up all the videos that are associated with that title. So these are some of the videos that we've uh, posted on our YouTube account for the Colorado State University Pueblo. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this video here by clicking the select button and it's going to allow me to put some more information about this video I'm deciding to embed it in my course so I can even change the name that this video has I'm going to leave that alone I think it's a great name if you want to describe why you're putting this video in the course or what you might want your students to do with this video you can do that in the description and then again there's more options as to what you want to attach to this document You'll notice that most of the items that we do put in feature the ability to attach a document to that. So it's really helpful if you're wanting to show a video, have some instructions that are in a Word document about what you want them to do with the video. Maybe they want them to write a report or something to that nature. That's why this attach or link content is in there. And of course the options as to if it's when it's viewable and if it's viewable at all. But I'll go ahead and hit submit. And so here it is, what a YouTube video looks like when it's added into Blackboard. If the students will click Watch Video, it's going to bring up a player right above everything. Click and play your video right within Blackboard. And students can close it by hitting the X, and they're back in their Blackboard course. So that concludes this tutorial for Blackboard Learn.